I like to talk about learn the helplessness, helplessness, lack of confidence, depression. Okay, such things. Dr. Martin Seligman, psychology professor in Pennsylvania University, ex experimented <clears throat> on helpless, helplessness using dogs. He put a dog in a small box which the dog could not move around freely and he gave electric shock to the dog. <clears throat> of course, the dog at first a uh, couple times uh, tried to avoid the electric shock, but a few times later, the dog uh, stood still, accepting the pain of the electric shock. So the dog became helpless. Dr. Seligman then removed the dog to a bigger box where the dog could move freely and again he gave the dog electric shock. The dog did not show any will to escape from the shock, just trembled. This is called lund helplessness. Later Dr. Seligman tried to help the helpless dog escape from the shock by putting a collar and leash on him. He forcibly pulled the leash while the electric shock was administered to the dog um, to help the dog escape from the box. On average, about 70 times many dogs experimented with many dogs. Average, 70 times pulling over and over forcibly, 70 times later. That's average. The dogs reluctantly moved out of the box. Some dogs moved out of the box. Can you imagine? After 250 times forcibly pulled over and over, they stupidly stayed in the box. They didn't want to come out. Why? Situation doesn't make that the dog you know, cannot avoid the shock because negative idea, negative idea. So learn the helplessness. After dogs escaped from the electric shock, when they were put back into the box, they voluntarily escaped at the very first attempt. Okay. We can easily understand that learn the helplessness is not because of a situation, but a negative interpretation of the situation. This is very important. A very similar experiment was done by Dr. Paul, Dr. Kurt Paul Richter at Johns Hopkins University in 1957. He was a biologist, and also psychologist, he also experimented why helplessness happens and how to cure it. I believe a couple of times I introduced this story. Dr. Richter took rats from the same litter, same mother, and he divided into two groups, group A, the squeezed rats. In other words, in other words, the rats in group A were put in the exper experimenter's hand and whenever the rats struggled to get away, the exper experimenter would squeeze stronger and stronger. Later, the rat became helpless. And even when the experimenter opened his hand, the rat would not escape just trembling. Then, he put these helpless rats into a water tank and observed how long they would swim, 30 minutes on average. They would swim before they drowned. So 25 minutes, 30 minutes, all the squid rats died. On the contrary, the rest in group B were never squeezed. They also were put into the same water tank and they on average swam, can you imagine, 64 hours. 
or longer, which is almost three days. Actually, exactly maybe two and a half day, two, two days and half day. However, when the group A squeezed the rest or about to drown after only about 25 minutes about to drown, Dr. Richter picked, the, picked them up from the water tank and placed them in his hand again. And he tried to help them struggle to escape by pushing them, pinching them, you know, with finger. Later, the rats could not endure the experimenter's physical harassment, so they reluctantly escaped. Those same rats that escaped at the first time from this experimenter's hand, okay? Immediately and voluntarily escaped each time after. In other words, the rats experienced only once, one attempt, either voluntarily or involuntarily. The rats happened to escape from the grip. Then the rats realized, ah, I can do it. We planted confidence, original capability. Then Dr. Richter put the escaped rats back into the water tank and observed how long they would swim. This is very interesting. Surprisingly, just like Group B, the controlled rats, the squeezed rats also swam on average 64 hours. Can you imagine? In other words, right after this rat experienced, I can do it became positive, then immediately when experimenters tried to squeeze, the rest voluntarily jumped away. And they could swim 64 hours, some no longer. So to speak, the squid rats recovered their original capability. Dr. Seligman called this phenomenon behavior immunization. You know, you practice sapkido, you are gaining confidence, then you will discover a lot of things you thought impossible to, uh, to take care of, now you can do it. I want you to understand, when you suffer from helplessness, that means lack of confidence, it means uncontrollability, I cannot control my situation, then intellectually, motivationally, and emotionally, they will experience impairment. That's why when they suffer from lack of confidence, their school grade is bad. In this case, most parents come and tell me, my children seem to be not smart. But to me, no. After a few months of Hapkido practice, they gain confidence, then the school grades goes up. That's why I, every period I collect report cards. I want you to go to better college to prepare for a better future. From these experiments, we can learn several things. <clears throat> First, when you do something, regardless of your failure of two or three times, don't despair. Don't give up. Keep on trying over and over until you succeed. You know, in case your children suffer from lack of confidence so they become helpless, please don't give up when you, you ask, you do something, you do this and that. Then such children who suffer lack of, from lack of confidence always no, no. No, always no. But when they say no, don't give up until they can succeed, you must uh, keep pushing. Uh, you know, I think he's a psychologist. 
Dr. James Gear, psychotherapist. Can I say psychotherapist? Okay, psychotherapist Dr. James Gear said, if I have such helpless patients, so they don't want to move at all voluntarily, then I would give them a swift kick on their butts until they move. In other words, never give up. Do you remember the dogs 250 times reluctantly moved out from the box? So most people, maybe a couple times later, they quit, believing that they are incapable. No, they happen to be educated that way. Thomas Edison invented, who invented the light bulb, he experimented 2,000 times. He failed 2,000 times. And then he succeeded on 20, two, uh, 2001, can I say 2000, first time, 2001 time. 2000 failed, then one more, one succeeded. You know what he said? I practiced 2,000 times, and I succeeded at once. He also said, our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try one more again. Second, we must understand we have never been educated by the perfect parents, teachers, neighbors, or other leaders. You know, even myself, I was squeezed from my parents, don't go near the water, don't do this alone, without me or nothing, you know. So, always negative, you know. One uh, female student was a mother of two children, three old girl, one day mom questioned, how does the dog sing? Whoa, whoa. And how about cat? Meow. What about mommy? No, 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 no. Always no. <laughs> we understand, we must understand, we've never been educated by the perfect parents, teachers, neighbors, or other leaders. So do not complain and blame others or situations. And so we ourselves must try to change ourselves. You are fully grown now. Third, we should know our destiny is not determined by the situation, rather by the way we interpret the situation. Most people always blame. Somebody opened up business and failed, and oh, economic situation, bad, you know, not proper time. People always blame others and situations because of you, because of my mother, because of my friend, I couldn't do this, and no. Next, number four. Let's be more positive, particularly we should change our language. Keeping in mind to use more positive words. Probably many of you happen to uh, be uh, educated by your elderly or parents or teachers. You are dummy, stupid. How come you don't understand this? Neighbor, Tommy is better than you, such things. One negative word can ruin our children's capability. Can I say that? This correct English? Okay. In other words, do not ever loot our children's inner potential by using negative words. Our children will never grow up beyond the parents' language limit. You understand what I mean? Sure, 
In the 19th century, William Ellery Channing, a pastor in Boston, said, Our biggest tragedy in humanity is not any catastrophe. Catastrophe? Am I pronouncing okay? Not any catastrophe, but wasting our great inner potential. We must watch out, encourage your friends, your children. Thank you very much.